Hello, Matt. Rick, good morning, sir. How are you? Good, buddy. You ready to talk about some technology today? Yeah, tech. Yeah, you like you like tech. Thing. You're kind of our tech guy. See, I mean, I like it. I think I'm already. You want me to add that to your job title? Sure, why not? I mean, CTO, throw a couple more things in there. CTO, uh, VP of Program Design, Marketing. That's my latest. <laughs> Marketing. My latest Just growing. You sound like Step Brothers. <laughs> Science, Marketing, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Entertainment, Prestige Worldwide, baby. Prestige Worldwide. <laughs> I put a I put a microphone I put a uh, what is it microscope on under uh, over an ant today it died. <laughs> I watched <laughs> so that, that weekend. <laughs> <laughs> Every time that shows on, I'm like, this is so dumb. And then an hour later, I'm dying. I'm still watching it. <laughs> yeah, I know. How about for today's podcast? Then you have to call me Nighthawk. All right. What was mine? Dragon. Dragon. dragon yeah. yeah. Okay. Right. Nighthawk right. and dragon. Yep. That's it from now on. All right, Nighthawk, what are we talking about today? Today we're going to talk about wearable technology. What do we think about it? Just over, over Alloy's lens on wearable technology. Why we've chosen not to put it into our current model. Mm-hmm. Um, and just, you know, overall, like where are we headed with it, right? Like what is what is wearable tech doing now? Um, and maybe how we should view it as an industry moving forward. Yeah. Well, I mean, it's coming off a, a great article that you shared um, with me and, and the team in it. The first part of just what's eye opening was, you know, tech is, you know, a competitor to any personal training, group fitness, you name it. It is it is in our grill and we gotta get ready for it. So Yeah, hundred percent. So the it was a white paper written by Humphrey Cobbled, I believe. Cobbled. I'm not sure. Sounds good now. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but it was a it was a great white paper and one thing that he said in the in the paper that was so true and it was about the fitness industry by the way was that uh, one of the biggest competitors is in everyone's pocket which mm-hmm. is the phone yeah. and when you get to 5G you know which is coming for everyone then uh, it's going to even be more compelling you're going to be able to do virtual reality and all kinds of interesting things mm-hmm. right so when let's just start with why you know we don't use wearables anymore right just the real in the trenches right now practical reasons right and then we get go into like how we need to view it moving forward so for us you guys we used to use uh wearable technology here like and heart we heart rate belts around your chest kind of yeah, stuff. yeah yeah to be specific heart rate belts with a screen where people would see what their effort was during that particular workout yep um we used my zone which was a great vendor partner of ours and they had a really good offering for this and they had a you know, the belt system, you know, we wear the belt on your chest to measure heart rate. It was very accurate. They could, people could wear it outside the gym and it would track activity. When they came in the gym, it would pick up from the belt and upload their other MEPs. And a MEP was just a rebranded, in my zone effort points was yep. a rebranded calorie mm-hmm. in a lot of ways, just like Orange Theory does splat points or what have you, right? And so, just in our own experience, you know, we knew intuitively from doing personal training that just getting your heart rate as high as possible every time you work out is not the end goal of every workout. And and it shouldn't be, Mm -hmm. right? I mean, scientifically speaking, physiologically speaking, that's not the ideal way to train. It would be Mm -hmm. like getting in your car, stomping the gas to the floor and redlining it every single time you drove it. It's not going to hold up long term. I don't care, you know, if you're 25 years old or 55 years old, it's not the right way to plan an overall, you know, all encompassing health and wellness program, just to stomp your foot to the gas two or three times a week. Right. And so, but we brought this heart rate monitor in, we knew that, but the problem that we had, and you know, now in in hindsight is that we gave people a tool. Mm -hmm. So by default, we were endorsing it. Right. right? And then we ran challenges that were based on exactly what we knew we shouldn't be doing. Driving that wrong behavior. (laughs) Right. (laughs) Saying basically, hey, you know, if your workout burns so many MEPs, then it's a it's a positive thing. You know, it's a good workout. And and maybe in some ways, if you don't burn that many calories, it's not a good workout. And I mean, whether we said that or not, and we certainly didn't intend to spread this message. But that's the message that was heard. And I think back on it, I'm like, well, duh, you gave them the tool. You gave them a point system. You gave them a scoreboard. It's kind of like we talk about with employees, mm-hmm. right? They're going to chase the scoreboard, Absolutely. the ones that are motivated. And there's a good deal that are. So wh- how that would manifest itself in the gym was, you know, we know that in a really good overall wellness point of view that people need to do different types of exercise, right? right? Like you don't need to, again, you don't need to hop in the car and redline it every time. 
You also don't need to lift heavy every time. You know, there's, there's ways to cycle it. We handle it through undulating periodization, but we're, if we're just like, Hey, if we can get you to the gym two or three days a week, we're going to give you a little bit of all of those things that mm-hmm. you want. Right. Yep. But you don't need too much of any of them. Right. right? Which is, is kind of common sense. So we threw this monitor out there. We put the scoring system on it and we would have people come in and it might be a strength focused day, which just by default is not going to burn as many calories. Now, I really want to get people out of the mindset, certainly from the consumer standpoint of how many calories that you burn in a workout quantifies whether or not that was a good workout. That is the wrong lens to put on fitness. Now, again, we knew that intuitively, but yet we inherently created this tool that Mm -hmm. made people think that the most important thing about the workout was to get a bunch of calories, you know, to burn a bunch of energy. That's not it. You have to look at how that workout affects like the whole ecosystem, right? And we talk about ecosystems. That's that's really where this thing is going for health and fitness, right? That was, again, exemplified in this article. It's like, listen, an overall ecosystem of fitness involves lots of moving parts. It's sleep, it's you know, recovery, it's nutrition, it's supplementation, it's strength training, it's, you know, it's a lot of things. Right. So to put a tool out there that only is one prong on the wheel, right, or one spoke and say, hey, okay, this is, this is the most important thing. People would come in, they would skip their strength workout that day Mm -hmm. because they were so focused on this tool and the scoreboard that by the way, we had provided and they would run up and down on an aerobic step with a headset in and basically do a self-taught step aerobics class. They have clients be in the gym for like four hours just right. getting MEPS. Just to get MEPS, right? Like from one hand, you're like, hey, they're in the gym. And then second, they're like, God, they're going to get hurt. And like, <laughs> right. You just get worn out, right? Week, and we have people know. like hobbling in here right. with knee braces and everything and just hammering themselves, trying right. to get this certain amount of MEPS. And it's like, yeah. look, at the end of the day, that's not what we're trying to do. And certainly as a brand, as a personal training brand, we're trying to be what we would describe as the hub of people's health and fitness. Right. And what that means is we understand wearables, right? And, and not just the wearables that we have, but you have to understand all wearables mm-hmm. and how they fit into the bigger ecosystem of wellness. Because we can't just sell best workout in town anymore. Mm-hmm. We can't, right? And so when we look at this bigger ecosystem, yes, we need to understand recovery tools and wearables and everything else so that we can speak to them. Right. But the reason that we got rid of, you know, our heart rate mechanism was because it drove exactly the type of behavior that we didn't want. Right. Right. Now back, you know, take a step back and say, okay, well then that's why you guys get rid of it. What was the, you know, okay, first of all, what were the results of taking it away? Right. We had some people that were a little upset because we had given it to them we had championed it by giving it to them and giving them a scoreboard and now they were tracking. Yeah. I mean, then there's a certain number of they're not every individual anyway, wants all that data right in their face, by the way. I mean, everybody assumed that they all like it, but a lot of people come in, they literally didn't want to see themselves because it was either self-defeating if they didn't get their heart rate up or didn't get as many maps. So there was, there was other issues in there. So when we did take it away, maybe a handful that just like seeing the numbers and we're attached to it. But the, the assumption that everybody likes seeing that stuff, um, that's another thing to consider. It's like, it's not true. Yeah, that is true. I, I mean, mean, do you I, like seeing all that numbers in your face? No, I mean, I've, <laughs> I've probably owned every wearable, including an Apple watch that's been made since the beginning right. of time and, and dabbled with them. And every one of them either ends up in a drawer or ends up going to right. one of my kids, or it ends up being traded in for something else because right. I have that good curse of knowledge, which tells me, listen, like how many calories I burn right now is not that important. Right. What do I like it for? Oh, how many steps did I do today? Like I like overall activity levels, right? right? Things like that, but not necessarily what was the effort that I put out in this particular workout, because it doesn't matter. How does that workout fit into the bigger ecosystem of my health? Because if I said, okay, I need to put out this many calories that day. Well, Let's say sleep is one of the spokes in the wheel that we talked about, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, so if I didn't sleep well last night because I've been traveling or maybe I went out to dinner and had some alcohol, so I didn't sleep well, so I woke up with an elevated heart rate. And so I go to the gym and I'm putting out a what would be a perceived exertion level that should get me to the right heart rate, yet I'm not able to get there. Right. So what do I do with that information? If the only thing I have, again, is a hammer, everything's a nail, meaning that- harder. (laughs) <laughs> right. Like just go harder. And I mean, a lot of people need to hear that, but a lot of people don't. And right. so in my case, if I based my su- the success of my health and fitness based on how many calories I burned in that workout, and I didn't theoretically get my heart rate as high because there was other things in the ecosystem, other spokes in the wheel right. that didn't allow me to, what does that even mean? Right. And so 
you know, we had a little bit of backlash from customers, um, but then we were able to explain this message. And if you really look at the data around weight loss, which is a big reason why a lot of people start with a personal trainer accountability sure. for yeah. the reason of weight loss, people that wear wearables typically gain weight, period, because it tends to overestimate, like Fitbit's notorious yeah. for this, overestimating how many calories you burn, and then you're like, oh, sweet, I'm killing it. Like, I can go yeah. and eat whatever I want. Slash make you hungrier because you're doing a step box for another hour and a half. Right. Maybe be better served not getting your blood sugar so out of whack so that your heart rate didn't get right. that high, right? Which yeah, tanked your blood sugar, which made you overeat yeah. that evening. So that, so that was, you know, we were using them, what, five, six years ago? Yes. Kind of got, got away from it. And then, you know, we we already knew it, but we started seeing it's like, man, we need to, this, this thing would be better served being able to show recovery and stuff. And it's just hard using a that tech where it's Once already Once you put the tool pushing. out there, it's really designed to right. measure how, like to quantify your workout with how many right. calories you burn. But then, you know, then all the other tech started coming out, you know, the Apple watches and stuff that are the whoop strap and, and the Cura started, ring and all those things. Cause they saw that that, that was where it was kind of headed. So now there's multiple different pieces of tech out there that, you know, again, we're the hub. You need to be able to negotiate around. Yeah, well, that's that's a key word. So when you say you're the hub, what it really means is understanding how you fit in the ecosystem. And yep. I think for gym owners moving forward, you can't be one-stop shop. Like, we're not going to be able to own the entire ecosystem anymore. Like, no. in the past, the gym was the hub of all health and fitness. But again, with a 5G competitor in people's pockets, right? right. We have to understand where we fit in the ecosystem and own that. And even in that, let's say it's the we're that hub, right? But we're still we're still in the ecosystem. And even in that area in the ecosystem that we want to own, we're still going to have direct line competitors, right? Sure. But you really need to decide where you fit. And then instead of trying to be all things, because you can't, I mean, you're not going to build, you know, a, a, you're not going to beat Apple at tech and you're not nope. going to build a watch or, you know, so instead of trying to own all of those verticals, you just need to understand how they fit into the ecosystem. And to be the hub means, understanding them well enough to make them apply to the individuals. And it's certainly in our brand for personal training, we need to understand how to make those tools and resources apply to those individuals. Right. right. So if we back, if we look at that, if we back up and look at, okay, how would we use heart rate now? Well, if we get someone in the gym and they are doing a lot of cardiovascular activity outside of here already, we wouldn't use heart rate at all as part of our brand, right? right? We might tell them more about recovery and how to use their wearable for recovery and what to do if they showed an elevated high heart rate or if their cure ring said they didn't sleep well or right. whatever those things are. You know, or the whoop strap said, okay, you're, you're, at a, you're not fully recovered to work out today. Great. Well, we can actually accommodate that in the gym, but we can also help people manage their health and fitness around mm -hmm. it. So being the hub means understanding how sleep affects your health, understanding what supplementation does, right? Right. COVID's a great example of that. Like, okay, vitamin D deficiency was big in a lot of the, you know, folks that were hospitalized with COVID. So great. Okay. So understand that vitamin D is a hormone and how it interacts with other hormones. It's not that difficult. This is Google knowledge basically, right? Understand how, you know, where, when do you need to do a high heart rate workout or you know, those type of things and why for you, not just cause, right but for that person. So if you have a, and, and this is something we've always done intuitively, but now that we have the technology to measure these things, we need to, in your terms, to be that hub, we need to understand how we fit into the ecosystem and how to speak to those other things right. as it relates to our brand. Well, it's just, it's guidance with those things that are out there and then you use it to enhance your own customer experience in the gym. It's not driving it but it's built to enhance. So as you take that individual, I mean, again, not everybody's going to be into these things, but the ones that are, like you're saying, you need to be able to speak to them and maybe draw more of a plan up around those things. Yeah, exactly. And if they really want to use their Apple watch, it's like, okay, what are their goals? Right? So this is the individual approach that a personal training brand allows for. We don't right. have a thousand members, which makes it much easier to mm -hmm. approach each person as an individual. We look at this ecosystem of technology, accountability, brick and mortar, which we are, right. and we know how, and we know where we fit in that ecosystem. And then we coach people around the other spokes, you mm -hmm. know, as we're the hub and say, okay, for you right now, here's what you need to do. This, this, and that. Like, what do I do with my Apple watch? It's like, well, right now, because you're, you know, your adrenaline's through the roof, you're stressed to the max because your work schedule's crazy, or you've got, you know, two-year-old triplets or something. It's like, right. Mm -hmm. Let's use that just to measure daily movement and activity. Right. And your goal will be to get to the gym three days a week here, 
if you do that, we're going to handle some, we're going to get the strength in, we're going to get some high heart rate done. Right. We're going to get some, you know, general fitness and mobility and all those things are going to be handled in our workouts. But I want you to use your wearables. I want to try to get 10,000 steps right. a day. And you might find that running around chasing the kids everywhere gets you there anyway, but let's right. see. And the great thing is that if you have your, some of your own technology, like if you look at our app, right, our app pulls in nutrition so we can track nutrition, right? We can mm -hmm. give like small goals, like steps a day. It can pull in some wearable technology. So being the hub means understanding how all the moving parts work together, but more importantly, certainly in our brand, how those things apply to that individual right in front mm -hmm. of you. Yeah, right? exactly. And we're, you know, AI isn't to the point yet where it can do that for us. I'm sure it won't be long. And then we'll just be able to leverage that as well. So, you know, we, we talk a lot about this hybrid model being able to do digital and, right. you know, but I think um, to go to evolve that further, I think instead of hybrid, we have to talk ecosystem mm -hmm. and technology is going to be a big part of that. There's no way around it. So as long it's, it, it is a competitor, but it can also be leveraged to help you right. if you're a brick and mortar owner, you just have to get out of your own head, realize that you're, you can't be all things to all people. Let me give an example. Like, you know, when we opened here in 92, I think in 95, when we were doing a lot of personal training volume, we polled our clients and it was some 90 something percent of our clients had a membership at a general health club. Yeah. And the reason they did that, cause they would go and back then it was like, they would go into aerobics or go walk on the treadmill or they would mm -hmm. use it to do other things or play racquetball or whatever that stuff is. Right. And that was great. And we were managing that as well. Okay. On your off days, go do these things. And here's mm -hmm. why for you. Right. Yeah. Well, that hasn't really changged no. now. I mean, we still, now it's a Peloton. Exactly. hundred <laughs> percent. Now it's a Peloton. Now it's some streaming workouts, right? Now it's yeah. the phone. Now it's or a guy it's, or it's, it's the row house, you know I mean? Those, exactly. You know. Yep. There's, and there's other brands out there. Some are brick and mortar, some are digital. It's like, that's fine. That's all part of the ecosystem. Right. The real, the real magic is in setting yourself up as the hub, which means having knowledge of those working parts and being able to approach each person as an individual, which I'm really happy that we're in a personal training brand so we can do that. Yep. And then point them in the right direction and manage their overall wellness. It's going to be more about wellness, you know, coming out in the future with, Hey, we got the best workout in town. It's going to be a bit of an empty claim. Yeah. Yeah. You know, we're really, as you know, we're encouraged and, and hopeful to see people come out of COVID with more awareness of their, of their, you know, wellness, not just necessarily their, you know, how many calories they burn per workout. Right. What does that even mean? Like, how's yeah. that fit into this ecosystem? Right. So hopefully more um, attention towards preventative wellness. Right. Yeah. Well, and it's, you know, not like wellness centers haven't been around for a very, very long time, but just people visualize workouts and they immediately think of, you know, getting healthy. So that's our tool or get them in. Yep. But we got to be more. I mean, you, yeah. You at the end to. of the day. And now technology is the major disruptor, but we can actually use it as long as we understand where it fits in the ecosystem right. and we can sit in that hub yeah. seat. Don't, so. if your, if your watch is your guidance and it's telling you what to do and you just go, tells you to go work out, that's, that's opposite of what we want. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> like maybe stand up is a good rule. Like Apple watches stand up now, you know, that's great. But yeah, you don't want that. You really, you know, to have a brick and mortar place where you can go a neighborhood gym Right. where the people know your name and they can help you manage all of these other technologies and things that are out there is great. It's a little bit overwhelming, but if you get to a real health professional that can really help you with your overall well being, right, right? That's really what from a consumer standpoint you should be looking for. You should not be quantifying your, you know, your exercise with how many calories you burn that day. That's really not that important. Right. There's a funny guy on Instagram who who posts he's just like really honest like kind of blunt truths about fitness. And I think he had a quote that I loved. It was like, tell me how many calories you burn during your workout. And I'll tell you how ineffective your workout is for fat loss <laughs> yeah, yeah. for fat loss. Right. <laughs> yeah. Cause it's like, if that's what you're measuring, I know that you're already doing the wrong things. And I think that's kind of where wearables started. Yeah. But now with recovery and you're seeing that swing back a little bit, it's more important ever that as coaches and as a brand, um, certainly as an alloy brand, that we understand how all these moving parts work together and we can help people manage them and, and work alongside of technology as part of the ecosystem, right. you know, not try to be the one-stop shop, leverage what's already out there and make it work for people that are willing to use that technology. Yep. Yeah. Good stuff. So I know we talked around it a lot, but does that, does that help? I mean, you had some good input. So anything it. else? Thanks Rick. You nailed it. I nailed it. <laughs> He's ever said that before. Well, listen, Dragon, I really appreciate it. <laughs> Thanks, Nighthawk. I'll talk to you next time. <laughs> Bye. Bye.